Queen City. The New World Order. Those are the roots of trouble. I imagine that right now you're feeling a bit like Alice. Tumbling down the rabbit hole? Hmm? Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain. But you feel it. You felt it your entire life. That there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is. But it's there. Like a splinter in your mind. Driving you mad. It is this feeling that has brought you to me. This is your last chance. After this there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. All I'm offering is the truth. Nothing more. But we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence. On infiltration instead of invasion. On subversion instead of election. On intimidation instead of free choice. On guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. But I am asking your help in the tremendous task of informing and alerting the American people. And now, welcome to another episode of Down the Rabbit Hole. Here's your host from FederalJack.com. It's Popeye. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to tonight's live edition. It is April 29th, 2000. And 13, the month of April has already gone by us. Where the hell has 2013 gone already? It's going past us at a rather alarming rate. Is it me, or does it seem like time is speeding up? I know it's not just me. It can't be just me. Literally, it seems like I just blinked and it was January. Anyway... April 29th. Wow. Where the hell did the year go already? Anyway, this week, we're going to be getting into a bunch of different things. I'm going to be getting into uh, some of the uh, some more of the off-air interviews I've done, like I aired uh, the one I did with Charlotte Iserby last week. And I'm glad to be uh, interviewing her again tomorrow during the day. We're going to be going over Skull and Bones and the CFR in detail. And I'll be airing that soon for you guys as well. Uh, but tonight I'm going to be going over uh, a few things that I didn't get a chance to uh, on Friday and uh, well Thursday and Friday of last week. And then after I got off air Friday, uh, Saturday morning, I found out uh, early Saturday morning that uh, Friday a, uh, a legend in this community, uh, Mr. Jim Tucker, had passed away. Uh, and if you don't know who Jim Tucker is, I'm going to give all of you a brief overview of who he is in the next segment. And uh, we're going to send him off uh, in a typical down-the-rabbit-hole fashion, the way we do things here, uh, with uh, full military honors, I guess you could say. So we'll be giving Jim a proper send-off tonight. And I want to go over a few other things. I cut up a piece of audio for you. I put together a... Uh, uh, I guess you could say it's a, a motivational speech. Uh, for those are, of you that are already awake, it'll motivate you. For those of you that are kind of on the fence, hopefully it'll motivate you a little bit to climb over the other side and start to broaden your horizons, as it were, with information. And there's even a little bit of a warning to the dark New World Order scumbags right in the beginning. So stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. Pack show, pack show. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. So for those of you who don't know who Jim Tucker was, Jim Tucker was a legend, ladies and gentlemen. That man was a persistent thorn in the side 
of these scumbags that are very high up, the powers that shouldn't be. Not maybe, not maybe the very, very people at the top of the pyramid, because I've always said, and I know other researchers agree with me, that the people that are at the very, very tippy top, we don't even know their names yet, but people very, very close to the top. He has been a royal pain in their side since 1975. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know that's 38 years the man chased after the Bilderberg scumbags? 38 years. Talk about Semper Fi. Always faithful. That guy was always faithful to his cause. And Tucker was quite a colorful character. I never had the pleasure of meeting him myself. Uh, I never had a chance to go uh, to the Bilderberg uh, protests uh, myself. But I know uh, plenty of people that have had a chance to interview him and meet him. And he was definitely a character in his own right. So the, the truth movement has definitely... Or I hate that term, truth movement. Ugh, I hate when it even slips out of my mouth like that. All right, the whatever this is, independent media, I guess you could call it, whatever, uh, has lost a great warrior this past Friday. He passed away on the 26th. And uh, if I had known uh, Friday night, I would have said something, but uh, I didn't find out until Saturday morning. So, and of course, I'm not on air till today, you know, till Monday, so... First thing I wanted to do was touch on it because uh, it. Uh, I'm not all like you know uh, upset and gonna uh, lose sleep over it or anything like that. And it's a part of life. I understand it, uh, but it is it, it is kind of sad when you you know you lose a good warrior like uh, Jim. He was uh, definitely they broke the mold when they made Jim Tucker, and uh, he was just a he was a. I don't know. I don't know how to describe him other than he was Jim Tucker because, they're, again, they broke the mold when they made him. I'm going to read you a little bit from American Free Press from their uh, little memoriam to Jim. And this is posted right up on their site. American Free Press is where Jim used to write for for the past, for I don't know, uh, I would assume at least 20 years or something like that. I think it goes into detail uh, when he exactly started writing for them, but I would say at least 20 years he's been writing for them, if not longer. James P. Tucker, Jr., December 31st, 1934, April 26, 2013. Famed Bilderberg hound, author of Jim Tucker's Bilderberg Diary, which is a book I suggest that you get. Again, the title is Jim Tucker's Bilderberg Diary. Passed away yesterday, and this was written Saturday, so Friday. Passed away Friday due to complications he suffered following a fall in his home. A proper tribute to Tucker will be rendered next week when the front page of the American Free Press newspaper will be dedicated to Jim. The thoughts and prayers from all of us at American Free Press go out to his family and friends. Thank you, Tucker, for all that you did to shine the light on the criminals of Bilderberg. And then Michael Collins Piper uh, wrote an article uh, about Tucker, which I'm going to read a little bit from. Our good friend Jim Tucker is gone but he may get his last laugh on David Rockefeller by Michael Collins Piper. Jim Tucker's only regret was probably the fact he didn't outlive his sworn nemesis of more than a quarter of a century, international banker David Rockefeller. And I'm going to interject here. You know what? I can say that at least Jim uh, wasn't being rolled around in a wheelchair with a crap bag strapped to him. So, Jim, you went with your dignity. Rockefeller, the only thing he's conquering right now is not pooping on himself. So, ooh to Jim and screw David Rockefeller. The, color for, the colorful former editor of American Free Press and still a continuing correspondent for this newspaper, Tucker died at a hospital in Virginia on April 26th at age 78 following complications arising from injuries received after falling down the steps in his home while in the company of his family. Best known for having trailed the aforementioned Rockefeller and the members of such high-level power groups such as the Council on Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, and most notably the Bilderberg Group, literally all over the planet for decades 
the legacy of the North Carolina-born self-described country boy as a hard-driving investigative reporter is one that is hard to rival. Prior to coming work prior coming to work in Washington, D.C. in 1975 as managing editor of the newly launched national weekly, The Spotlight, Tucker had been, by his own admission, a conventional journalist with a wide range of experience in the mainstream press, largely confident that the big media in America was doing its job, bringing readers the news they needed to know. He was sports editor of the Northern Virginia Sun, managing editor of the Daily Tifton Gazette in Georgia, managing editor of the Radford, Virginia Daily News, copy, copy editor of the Richmond, Virginia Times-Dispatch, night editor of the Washington Daily News in the nation's capital, managing editor of the Martinsville, Virginia Bulletin, and news editor of the Akron, Ohio Beacon Journal. However, the day that Willis Carto, treasurer of Liberty Lobby, the populist institution that published the spotlight, called Tucker into his office and described to Tucker the little-known history of the Bilderberg meetings, Tucker's worldview, particularly from his perspective as a journalist, changed forever. Now, from that point, Jim started chasing the Bilderberg group and, uh, you know, going after them and writing about them. And if it weren't for him, people like myself, Alex Jones, and others might not know. Well, in fact, we wouldn't know the things we know because it was Jim's insider connections and his his leaks here and there that got us the stuff, the information that we know. People used to leak information out all the time to him. You didn't see CNN or Fox News getting tips, of course, that they wouldn't give them anyway. I mean, they're, you know, they're executive producers and whoever were actually higher than that. But the people like uh, Ail, Roger Ailes and the rest of them probably... Uh, have been in there at least once or twice, or you know, maybe editors somewhere over at a Council on Foreign Relations meeting. Oh, you don't believe me? You think I'm being tinfoil hat? Seriously, you should go look it up. Go look into it. Rockefeller's even quoted as saying there's a reason pretty much why he, <laughs> the, the reason why no, none of, uh, no, nobody knows about this stuff and we've gotten as far as we have, and I'm paraphrasing here. You can go look up the David Rockefeller quote, but it, 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 he thanks the editors of like Time and Newsweek and a bunch of other publications and says if it weren't for them not reporting on what they hear at the meetings, then uh, people would have long ago known about what was going on and they would have put a stop to it. But they've been able to get so far because of the... Uh, the gatekeeping shills, as it were, the scum. And Tucker didn't, didn't bow down to these people. He stood up. He wasn't afraid to take these people on. I mean, Jim Tucker got shot at. They tried to kill him numerous times. You think that chasing the Bilderbergs all those years, you don't think they screwed with him and tried to take him out a couple times? Of course they did. And he still persisted. He didn't care. Because they were bad. He knew what they were doing was wrong. And Tucker made a stand. Regardless of whether or not you, you like his gruff approach to things, or some of the things that he might have said when he was a little tooted, Tucker had a brass set that wouldn't fit in the back of a dump truck. Okay, that's just the way it is. So, with that in mind, I want to give Mr. Tucker a proper military-style send-off and typical down-the-rabbit-hole fashion here. And, of course, anybody that listens to the YouTube archive uh, later on down the road, you guys will have to, and this part will be cut, it, cut out, edited out. It'll, it'll go from me talking to me talking. What I'm about to play won't be there because YouTube always blocks it on crap copyright grounds. But I'm going to play this for Tucker, so I appreciate if everybody just give a, uh, a three minutes and 20 seconds of their time to honor Mr. Jim Tucker. Here is Amazing Grace on the bagpipes. This is for you, Jim. Jim Tucker, a true hero and a true warrior for truth and freedom. Fair winds and following seas, Jim. Bravo, Zulu. Semper Fi and Semper Parata, sir. They definitely broke the mold when they made Jim, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we got a break coming up in about a little less than a minute. And when we get back, we have a bunch of craziness to get into. You teach your kids to uh, defend people when they see them getting beaten up, innocent people, right? 
my mother taught me when I was a kid, if you know, if you, you see a bunch of people beating up on some somebody smaller, you don't just stand there. You go in and you clean house. They're bullies. Get them to swing at you if you have to, and then you know, call it self defense. Well, girl stands up for a kid being bullied, and she's the one that gets in trouble. What? That's right. In the new America, kids aren't allowed to stand up for other kids. You get punished for things like that here in the new America. That's the kind of crap that Tucker was trying to stop. Because he knows that that's part of this larger agenda. Destruction of morals, destruction of the family, all that. Financed by people like these scumbag Rockefellers. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Jim Tucker, you're a legend, sir. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. And, you know, I never plug anything on here. as Well, I do, but not as much as I should. That's one of the things I forget to do because I'm, I'm really about getting the information out and stuff and, and analysis and things like that. I, so I, I, I always forget to plug things. But um, the subscriptions here on Unbound, and this is not anybody asking me to do this. This is something I want to remind everybody. If everybody wants to help out, right, if you want to uh, do your part but you don't know what, the least you could do if you want to help fund the fight because there's a ton of hosts on this network, like hardworking hosts. All of them on this network work their rear ends off. All of them. Every single one of them. So if you want to support all of us, instead of just, uh, like, even if you only listen to my broadcast or you only listen to Webster Tarpley's broadcast, and in that case you probably won't hear this, but say you only listen to my broadcast, right? You don't listen to anybody else's. Just subscribe just to rip my, my high-quality archives alone. But honestly, if you subscribe, you get access to everybody. So I would just take everybody's because there you go. But even if you only listen to my show by subscribing, you're supporting all the other great people on this network. You're supporting Shepard, who created this network, You know, came up with the idea for it. He's funding it out of his pocket. You're helping Chris who, if it weren't for him, you guys wouldn't hear us because he's, he's our tech guy. And, you know, kudos to Chris Geo. If it weren't for you, dude, the audio wouldn't be going and you know, nobody would have this network. Uh, you guys wouldn't have a platform to hear all the awesome hosts here. And kudos to Joe Joseph for busting his butt to bring this whole thing together like one well-orchestrated uh, opera on Broadway and, and make it, you know, all work like a well-oiled piece of machinery. The network's been up less than a month, and it's already going strong. Very strong, ladies and gentlemen. Super strong. Every day we get new listeners. We get more people coming to the network and finding what's going on and going, ooh, you know, who's this host or who's that host? Or I, I get emails every day now from new people. Every day. I found your net. I found your broadcast on uh, Unbound, Pop. I, you know, I, I came here because I, I was listening to Jason Burmis, or I came here because I was listening to Webster Tarpley, or I came here because I was listening to Change the Channel. And I found your broadcast, and it works the other way around. People come here to listen to me, and they realize that Tarpley's here, or they realize that Change the Channel's here, or they realize that Jason Burmis is here, or Joe is here, and any of the other great hosts that I've forgotten to mention. So I wanted to take a few minutes to just, if you guys appreciate any of the hosts on this network, if you appreciate anything that we do, the easiest way to support us, you don't have to buy a t-shirt or a magazine or a book or a movie or anything. We don't have any of that, except for Shepard. He's got shade. You can buy shade. But besides that, we don't really have anything else like that that we sell, right? Uh, So if you want to support the network, then go ahead and get a subscription. It's not really expensive, and honestly, you get access to everybody's archives, and it helps everybody out. I know it sounds like a sales pitch, but I never take any time out to plug anything because I'm always hammering information, so I figured I would uh, dedicate a few minutes to reminding everybody about that because a lot of people forget that, um, y- yeah, you can hear I mean, y- you can hear the, the lower quality for free, but it's cool to have the, the high-quality archives, not only of my shows. Again, if you subscribe, then you have access to everybody's across the board which is kind of cool. So it is what it is. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what I do, if you appreciate what I do, go ahead and uh, support the network because 
uh, by doing that, you'll be supporting everybody that chips in and kicks in. And we, we could certainly use your help because we certainly don't have any mainstream funding whatsoever from the scumbag uh, powers that shouldn't be. Anyway, we got a break coming up in about a minute and 20. On the other side, I want to get into what I was telling you, the story about this teen who was defending a special needs girl or a special needs student, I should say, a girl who is defending a special needs student. And uh, she's being punished for it. And, of course, what state is it in but Florida? Because that's really annoying. Just super, super annoying. Annoying. Um, if anybody has any questions about uh, subscribing, I'm looking for Joe's email as I'm talking to you here. It's joe at unboundradio.com, joe at unboundradio.com. If anybody has any questions about uh, subscriptions or anything like that, uh, because I'm, I'm, so, I'm seeing a few messages in the, the Listen Live chat that, uh, on the page there that people have a, a few uh, questions. So if anybody's got any questions, feel free to email Joe, and he will get back to you. Uh, you know, it might take him 12 hours or 24 hours, but he'll get back to you as soon as he possibly can. And then uh, we'll go from there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, break sneaking up. We're back in about three minutes. Don't go anywhere. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. I want to get into this just utter idiocy. As I said, going into the break, I, I called it retarded, which is what it is. It's slowed down thinking. I'm not making fun of special needs people. There's no puns because it actually is about a special needs person being bullied. But the, the thinking of the the person that's retarded in this isn't the special needs person. It's the idiots that are running the school. That's who the real retarded people are. Listen to this. Teen punished for stopping bullies from harassing a special needs girl. I, I, <laughs> what? Oh... I'm sure it's going to be, you shouldn't get involved. I haven't read this yet. I, I, I kept my reaction live and raw for all of you, but I'm sure there's going to be some retarded reason. Let's see. A Florida high school student, of course it's in Florida, a Florida high school student made a stand against bullying and is now in the hot seat with school officials. For months, 18-year-old Stormy Rich witnessed a girl with special needs being bullied by her peers on the way to school. They would be mean to her, tell her she couldn't sit on certain spots on the bus. Just because she doesn't understand doesn't mean that should be happening to her, the girl told the local TV station there, uh, WOFL-TV. Rich says she reported the incidents to the bus driver and school officials. When they didn't take action, she stepped in and confronted the bullies. Good for you, Stormy. Good for you. Your parents taught you well. Stupid school officials. And look, by the way, people, she went to these people. I'm going to repeat a line. She reported the incidents to the bus driver and school officials. They, they didn't do anything, and they don't. They don't. They don't do anything to stop the bullying, but then when, when, when something bad happens, they go, oh, my God, well, we need anti-bullying laws, you know. We don't know what to do. Oh, right. You don't need any more laws. Should do what my mother did. Teach the kid. You don't start. You don't swing. You don't. You know, throw the first swing, but you definitely end the fight. But you're not allowed to do that anymore. That's that's raising a little terrorist. Anyway, I digress. Instead of praising her efforts, she ended up being labeled as a bully, and her bus riding privileges were revoked. Ooh, you can't ride the bus, which I, I guess you know, some people, they you know they pay for their kids be, to ride the bus because it's easier because then they don't have to drive the kid to school or whatever. Maybe she lives that far away that she doesn't need the bus, but that's just ridiculous. I, there's got to be a better, you know, her bus riding privileges. It's a privilege to ride in a bus, in a school bus. A stinky, nasty school bus with, by the way, school buses are dangerous. There's no seat belts in them. So it's against the law for a child to be in your car without a seatbelt, but if they put 40 of them in a bus, it's cool. Makes a lot of sense. Mm. A lot of sense. A spokesperson for the school district said, quote, two wrongs don't make a right, end quote. 
mm, brings me back to childhood memories. Do do they still go to like the one factory that pumps out brainless morons, uh, these automatons that work at these schools? I mean, I know I've talked to Charlotte Isserby. I know what's going on. Two wrongs don't make a right. Okay. So, sir, when you're walking down the street, right, and you get mugged and somebody's kicking your face in, I'll be sure to keep on walking by because, hey, wouldn't want to get involved because two do- wrongs don't make a right. It would be wrong for me to strike the guy in the face that was kicking you and yours while you were on the ground, right? Think about that for a second. Personalize it. Uh-huh. Now it's a different story, I'll bet. Although, I did play the audio. Uh, I don't think it was here on Unbound. It was right before I came to Unbound. One of my older shows you guys can hear in the archives. I'll have to find it for you. But there was a woman who was one of the gun control, uh, during the gun control debate stuff. And... Uh, she said that she pretty much, and I forget who was interviewing her. It was either, it might have been Mark Dice or Adam Kokash. Somebody was interviewing might have been Kokash. Somebody was interviewing her and uh, uh, about defending herself. And she pretty much said that people shouldn't have the right. This was a regular citizen said that people shouldn't have the right to defend themselves. And he was like, well, what if someone breaks in to kill you? And she's like, well, then I guess I'm going to be killed. I, my older listeners know exactly what I'm talking about. You can go back in my archives. Around, uh, around, uh, it's, uh, December, because it was right around, right, right after, it was after Newtown. So, like, between December and March, I know it's a three-month span, but look for any of the gun control ones, and, uh, when you click on it, it'll be a, that, you know, it'll open it up, and there'll be a description, and in the description, it'll tell you which one, I forget which episode it was, but you'll, you'll hear the audio where it, you know, I, if I'm going to get killed, I, I guess I'm going to get killed. That's a two wrongs don't make a right. You're setting these kids up for failure. That's why they're getting bullied. That's why these kids commit suicide and they can't handle anything, amongst other reasons. But that's one of the biggest reasons. These kids are being set up for failure. And, oh, I know, I know, I know. We don't condone fighting. We don't condone bullying, Popeye. Well, like my mother said to me, I don't condone my kid being used like a human punching bag. You know what? I got in a lot of fights when I was in middle school and in the beginning of high school. By the time I was a senior, I didn't have any problems. Nobody wanted to screw with me. You know why? Because everybody realized what would happen if you did. It was as simple as that. My little stepbrother witnessed it. We were in class one day, and he was getting razzed, and he was getting picked on. He was a freshman, and I wasn't going to intervene because, you know, I was leaving. He's going to have to have another three years without me. He's going to have to learn to defend himself and gain his own respect. That's the way it works in the, in the real world. Well, the whole room was picking on him, and they wouldn't stop. So finally, I just lifted my head because it was one class we had together, and I lifted my head up, and I said, that's enough, and everybody shut up. If he were here right now, he would remember. He, he would tell you the story. Absolutely, one hundred percent true. And he asked me later on, how, "How how how did you do that?" I said, "They understand I mean business." Well, why is that? Because I fought half the people in the room at one point, and I didn't lose. You have to give your kid that mentality. No, Popeye, the world is full of rainbows and sugar plums. No, it's not. It's not. And if you set your kid up for failure when they're young, when they're older, they're going to run into that very same type of situation or incident. Except now, they don't have that, that uh, reference, that frame of reference to fall back on in their brain on how to deal with it. And they won't know what to do. I don't tolerate crap. I'm in my late 30s. I don't tolerate crap any more than I did when I was a kid, I mean, I obviously, as you get older, you you have a little bit more patience in things and you think things out and stuff. But I still have that in me that I'm not a doormat. I am not going to be allowed or I'm not going to allow somebody to be using me as a doormat. I'm not going to allow myself to be used as a doormat by anybody, right? That's that feistiness that my mother did not try to breed out of me, that my father did not try to breed out of me. 
My parents set me up for success. They taught me to think outside the box. They taught me to never be a bully, never throw the first fight, but always defend yourself. Don't just stand there and take it like a Mary. Don't get punched in the face 15 times, not do anything about it. Sometimes, yeah, you got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. But you, you defend yourself. And these kids nowadays, they're being taught that any form of self-defense, any form of defending the weaker, anything good like that is wrong. And where does that kind of agenda come from? Well, that's, of course, UNESCO, and that comes from the, the whole push for a world government. Hey, you can't have a world government without people willing to have a world government, right? Well, there's a certain group of the general populace that ain't going to go along with it. But you get the younger generations, you train them, and it doesn't matter. What did Jefferson say? Freedom's only a generation away from tyranny? That's what they're doing. And it starts with pussifying the kids at a young age so they won't stand up when they're older. Don't you understand that? No, I don't think you should be raising your kids and sending them off to school and teaching them to be Rocky Balboa. But you should teach your kid how to fight. It's a matter of life. I mean, he's going to get in a fight. Well, we don't condone fighting. In our family, li little Johnny doesn't throw punches. He's taught to curl up into a ball... Uh, as if a bear was attacking him and play dead. Yeah, because that really works. What's he going to do when he's older? And he's walking down the street. You guys are in another part of the country because he moved away and he's got a girlfriend and he's walking down the street and somebody mugs him. What happens then? He won't know how to deal with himself. He won't even have the urge to defend himself or protect the person he's with. How about if he's walking down the street and he witnesses a car accident? He's probably not going to have it in or she. The person won't have it in them to go help. So they'll keep walking. Oh, that happens a lot. There was a case. It was a famous case back in, I think it was Brooklyn. Brooklyn? It was either Brooklyn or Queens. It was one of the two. In the late 70s. And I, I, I'd have to look at. I could probably just Google a few keywords and it would pop up. But uh, this girl was murdered on the street, right outside her apartment complex. And this was in the '70s, before everybody had central air, and not everybody could afford the in-window air conditioners at the time because uh, they were they were still newer. So you had uh, a lot of people with open windows. Not one person in the building said they heard her screaming. She screamed for help. I think it was, they figured out it was something like 15 or 20 minutes at least. Nobody came out to help her. And when the cops went door to door, nobody heard a thing. So it does happen. Look at Good, or not Good Friday, uh, Black Friday, whatever the hell it is, the day after Thanksgiving, when all the morons go shopping. Like sheep. People step over one another while they're having heart attacks. Right? They're doing a great job, ladies and gentlemen. Not only are they hammering away your morals, they're getting you to hammer away at your kids' morals. Your children are the future. And everybody talks about leaving a better planet for the future generations. How about leaving a better future generation for the planet? Right now, a lot of these kids are mindless automatons. They don't think for themselves. You go to the store and you deal with these kids now when they're working the cash register and something happens where the register doesn't work right. It doesn't ring up and they don't have it on their little laminated card in front of them and they don't know what to do. The only thing they could do is press that little red panic button so the manager comes over. That's what this kind of stuff does to your kids. Oh, I know. That's a far stretch, right? No, it's not a far stretch because you're setting them up for failure and when you start one with one domino... It just keeps going. That's why these kids are the way they are nowadays. These children, the kids of today are not like kids when I was a kid. And the kids when I was a kid were not like the kids before in the generations before me. It's being done on purpose. Now, luckily, there are a few good ones out there. You guys have heard me 
uh, talk about Natalie. You've heard me, inter- you know, have her on before, and uh, there's other kids like her too. But that's because her parents and the other kids' parents are doing the right thing. They're setting them up for success. Joe and his wife are setting his kids up for success. He's got a 16-year-old kid. His son is – Joe, his son is awesome compared to most of these 16-year-old you know, idiot teenagers out there because his parents are doing the right thing. Don't set your kid up for failure and this crap – you need to stand up to these principals and these dickhead officials at schools like this. My mother did back in the day. You can too now. Do it. I want to give a big shout out to the people that are at least in the chat room that already stepped up to the plate and a couple people went and bought subscriptions already to Unbound for the year. So thank you so much. I just want to give, uh, try and make it interactive and let everybody know I do pay attention. I keep an eye on things, and uh, I do appreciate when people step up and do that. That's really awesome. Uh, again, that, you know that that's how we're gonna we're gonna beat this, ladies and gentlemen. Is the grassroots level people taking the media back, people taking the country back, inches, like the Pacino speech that I put together with Payday Monsanto. That's where that that came from. That's actually my original intro from my broadcast, from when I first started. The intro I have now uh, is my second intro. But the, uh, the, the Inches speech that I play for you guys from time to time to inspire you all, uh, that was my original uh, intro. But yes, those Inches, every one of them, you know, uh, it, it, when you guys go out and do things like support the network or things like that, uh, that's, that's one of those Inches, believe it or not. That's not a selling point. It, it's the truth. It's a fact because when you support the network, that allows us to continue to do what we do, and then that helps wake up people around the world. So even, uh, even though you're, you're getting something, you know, you're getting the archives for it, you're not only getting the archives, but you're helping somebody else hear the show live and uh, have access to the lower quality ones. So kudos to everybody that stepped up to the plate. Uh, and anybody that's not in the chat and that has stepped up to the plate or, you know, later on goes and, you know, kudos to you as well. Don't want to leave anybody out, have anybody get offended. Just kidding. A little sarcasm. Anyway, second hour, I have a bunch of stuff for you, including, again, a uh, a speech, which I'm going to wait until the, uh, uh, the probably the... Uh, the second to last segment because it's long, but I'll, I'll probably wait till the second to last segment to play it for you all. Uh, it's inspirational, as I said, and it's got a bit of a warning to the powers that shouldn't be uh, in the beginning of it. Uh, and ladies and gentlemen, I meant when I said la- what I said last segment about setting your kids up for success. Okay, it's a, a term setting them up for success is a term uh, that uh, I took away from boot camp. You don't want to say it's one thing I did. I, I, one important lesson I took away from my drill instructors, if I didn't take anything else, which I, I took a bunch of things out of there, but uh, one of the big lessons I learned was that if you set yourself up for failure, you will have failure. And if you have kids and you set them up for failure, they will be failures and, and probably be that way for the rest of their lives. I know a lot of people don't like to take responsibility when their kids are losers. And sometimes sometimes it's not your fault. Sometimes kids just turn out to be morons. You know, so Everybody is their own person, right? But a lot of the things that you do to the child ha- has a big effect on the child. Schools are brainwashing facilities, ladies and gentlemen. How many of you have kids out there that hate going to school? I bet you there's like, you know, if there's, if there, we'll, we'll say if there's 300 people that hear me ask that question right now, I'm willing to bet there's probably oh, 200, 210 of them that have kids. And out of those 210, or we'll say we'll round it down to 200, out of the 200 that have kids, well, I'm willing to bet at least 100 to 250 of them have kids that don't like going to school. Because the teachers are scum, or or they're mean, or they feel like they're in jail, or they hate it there, or they just don't like the vibe, or the other kids are mean, uh, you know, blah 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 blah. I could go on and on and on. Take them out of school, homeschool them. Well, that's a lot of responsibility, Popeye. Well, 
getting pregnant was a lot of responsibility. You took it on. No point in half-assing it. There's no reason, no good reason whatsoever, not one, to allow the state to raise your child for you. Not one good reason. I'm not talking about, oh, if there's abusive parents. No, stop it. I don't, want to, don't, somebody, I don't even want to hear that argument right now. I'm talking about people sending their kids to public schools. Seriously, they're indoctrination centers. Take them out. Form co-ops. Homeschool co-ops. Email Joe. Email Joe Joseph over, I forget what his freedom link is. It's Go to the freedomlink.net. He's got the email right up there. And you can email him there uh, at that email about the, the homeschool thing because he does homeschooling stuff. If you got any questions, I'm sure he'll, he'll send you in the right direction. He's done broadcasts on it. Start a homeschool co-op in your area. I'm sure there's other... Look, I know for a fact there's other people out there that think like you, ladies and gentlemen. You just don't realize it because other people are afraid to say it. Stand up. You'd be surprised how many others out there are awake. This is Sparta! They just feel disconnected. Like the powers that shouldn't be want them to. All right, we're going to break. We'll be back in a few short minutes. Do not go anywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with our number two here on tonight's live edition of Down the Rabbit Hole. I am your host, Popeye from FederalJack.com. It is April 29th, 2013. Man, there is still a bunch of crazy news and things to get into. Some good news, really quick. CISPA. CISPA has died once again. But let us not take our eye off of the ball, ladies and gentlemen, because this happens every time. They go to pass something, people get uppity, and they get a little pissed off about it. And they stop. And then they wait. And then they try it again during some sort of turmoil. Or while they're doing it, some sort of turmoil conveniently happens, you know, because coincidences, right? And that's sarcasm, by the way, in case anybody didn't catch it. But then they, they, they'll they go to pass this again, and uh, they get caught, and they, they can't pass it again, so they wait. But if you noticed, there was a lot less online chatter this time about CISPA compared to the first time. There was some, but nothing like the first time. And ACTA and all these other bills and things that have been tried to be passed between here and the EU and all these other countries. You really didn't hear much about CISPA this time because other things dominated the news cycle. And I'm not talking about the mainstream. I'm talking about the independent slash alternative media. Sometimes we get played and we don't even realize we're being we're being played, ladies and gentlemen. You ever wonder if the newer, younger technocratic uh, whatever you want to call them, the younger generations of the powers that shouldn't be the people around my age and the people just above my age in their 50s you ever think maybe that they're smart enough to learn from what's going on and how we expose things we being the independent slash alternative media right you don't think that they watch us like we watch them everybody think a lot of people get get complacent and they think that they're bumbling morons Oh, they make mistakes all the time. We can see through it. Oh, yeah. They do. They also study us because they have an advantage that a lot of us don't. A lot of them have a real classical education. They understand how the human psyche works more than most people. They know how to manipulate people. They know how you're being manipulated. 
how we are all manipulated. So don't you think maybe that they're studying how the independent media reacts to things and maybe sometimes things are done for a bunch of different reasons. Not only does it keep the masses distracted, but it also keeps us distracted. So keep your eye on things like CISPA. Just because they're saying it's dead doesn't mean it's dead, ladies and gentlemen. We will be right back. If you need any more proof that that whole week of fear and terror was contrived, as myself and many, many others have said, and I'm not saying that bombs didn't go off. I'm, <laughs> Of course they would have bombs go off, but better way to terrorize people than actually let a bomb off. But it doesn't mean it wasn't a controlled event or a contrived event. False flag doesn't obviously uh, mean that video cameras and a, a movie set are required for this kind of stuff. That's why you have those morons out there that run around. And I'm not saying the good people. I'm talking about, you know who I'm talking about. I'm not even going to give the guy airtime. But you know who I'm talking about. The ears and the, the nose guy. You know who he is. It's in the ears. That dude is a total disinfo agent. Okay? He's a total disinfo agent. Nobody goes to that extreme unless you're being funded in some way, shape, or form and you have an agenda. I've gone into detail in this before. Okay? But that kind of stuff is, is put out there to mire uh, and, and you know, muddy up the waters and, and make it a, you know, mire and muck. And then nobody wants to step in it. Everybody just keeps clear of that whole issue. Because it, it, you know, it, 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 it's done with everything, ladies and gentlemen. It's done with a lot of this stuff. You know, the Jew firsters are the same thing. It's, the, it's done, the, the people that come out and you know, they say the Jews did everything. And I'm not saying the stuff that Israel has done, the government of Israel, or people that, whatever, of Jewish descent have done, but I, or, or any, anything like that. I, but I mean the people that, you know, everything from it snows, the Jews did it, you know. Uh, the, the moon didn't come out, for, you know, in the right space or something. And oh my God, the, the Jews did it. You know, that kind of stuff is put out there to uh, muddy the waters so that way, any legitimate criticism of what Israel does to the Palestinians uh, and anything else, uh, you know, any legitimate criticism of you know, the USS Liberty attack, anything like that, you know, must maybe Mossad's involvement in 9-11, things like that, any legitimate criticism of them gets, you know, it gets muddied up because as soon as you mention Anything about the government of Israel, it's, oh, you're anti-Semitic, you're one of the Jew firsters, that's it. And then you have the, that frame of reference of those morons saying that, right? So it, that, it's just like that other thing with the, the ears and the nose, right? Same kind of crap. Put out there to money the waters. Now, <clears throat> why do they bring all that up? Because I wanted to just give you a brief understanding, right? I've gone over how uh, psychological operations work. I've played the audio from the, one of the, the from the fifties, from one of the army training videos, and you could hear how they, if you understand what's going on and you see what's going on, you could see how it's being the very same techniques are used as against against us today, right? Okay. With that in mind, I'm going to read you the title of an article on RT. You ready? <clears throat> Suspected rice and mailer released from custody as all charges dropped. Oh, bet you didn't hear about that one in the mainstream media. Bet you that didn't get too much airtime, did it? Nope. But the fact that there were letters with rice and mailed, oh my God, it's reminiscent of 9-11, ladies and gentlemen. Terrorists all over the country, lone wolf. Oh my God, be afraid, be very afraid. Fear, fear, terror, terror, fear, fear, terror, 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 terror. Fear, 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 fear. That's all you heard that whole week. Oh my God, Ryson, it's like 9-11, oh my God. And suddenly the guy has the charges dropped against him? Huh? The guy that supposedly sent poisoned letters to the president and the members of Congress? The Justice Department just dropped all charges. They cited new information. Quote, unquote. He's no longer a suspect. I, I thought he was the guy. 
I thought he was the one. You guys took stuff out of his house. You splashed his name and his face all over the place. And all of a sudden, we're looking for other suspects. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Hmm. Very reminiscent of uh, the uh, the uh, anthrax mailings. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder if they'll find a, a lone pissed off biologist or whatever scientist, whatever weaponized warfare specialist. I don't, I don't know. I'm, I, off the top of my head, I can't think of uh, what little subsection of science you would fall under, what your title would be if you made horrific infectious diseases. And you knew how to do that stuff, like the dude over at uh, Fort Detrick. So, but I'm, maybe, maybe that'll be the next fall guy. Or maybe it'll be, it'll be a truther who was able to get his hands on some castor beans. We have, we have to, if you're going to buy castor beans, damn it, you need a registration. You need to register your castor beans. Why don't we just register everything? Why don't we do that? Well, to make a safer world, right? Because they're going to keep pulling this crap off until we just, it, <laughs> until we're basically living in prisons. Even though, for all intents and purposes, the houses that the people live in were turned into prisons in Boston. Don't come out of your house for your own safety. And then they go, they come in and pull people out at gunpoint. How is that safe? Hi, I have my gun pointed at your face for your, for your safety. Uh, really? Because guns don't save anybody uh, when they're pointed at their faces. They might save somebody if someone else is under fire from like a bad guy and they step up to the plate and you help out or something like that. But if the gun is pointed at your face, at your head, at your child, or in your direction, really doesn't matter what body part, in your direction or your children's direction, it's not for safety. The last time I checked, basic gun safety said, you don't point a gun at anything unless you wish to destroy it slash shoot it slash kill it basic rules of gun safety and yet the people that are suffering mass Stockholm syndrome in Boston find it okay that they're getting pulled out of their houses at gunpoint well it was scary and I really didn't like it but you know it's they got to do what they got to do. No, well, you know, I'm, I'm sure people said the same thing back when the British troops were coming inside of houses and just no warrants, no, no nothing, no writ, no anything. They just walk in and they would do whatever the hell they wanted, rifle through people's stuff. It's cool because the terrorist is in your wife's underwear drawer. Anybody see the pictures of them going through people's stuff? They're like going through closets, like pushing shirts around. Dude, really? Al Qaeda's not in the closet. Well, you see, those cops were operating on the same level of fear that everybody else was. You can't blame. See, this is where people, <clears throat> this is where it gets a little. You have to understand how psychological operations work and how this whole thing works from a bigger perspective, okay? Because the first inclination would be to want to blame all the cops that were on the streets. Well, now, breaking their oath to the Constitution, doing what they did, that's different, okay? Pulling people out of their houses and stuff like that at gunpoint, okay, that's different. But they... Uh, Personal accountability, blah, 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 personal level for what they did, yes. But that's not where the blame should stop. And that's where a lot of people, yeah, it's the freaking cops, blah, blah, blah. And then that, that feeds into that it's us versus them mentality between us and the police officers that are still asleep. You have to remember, these guys were on the ground. You want to talk about being ground zero to the, uh, the trauma-based mind control going on? Those cops didn't know that that wasn't real. They're training for this. They train for this stuff all the time. I'm sure some of, maybe someone in the chain of command somewhere might have known that this is you know, complete horse crap. But the guys that were on the ground, I'm willing to bet at least 75 to 80% of them, if not more, were completely 100% buying into this, as was everybody else. It was a whole week-long drama. It was almost like a reality TV show. They started it up on a Monday, and the show ended on Friday. Myself and others called it. I said it 
Wednesday and Thursday of that week, I said, I'm willing to bet. Wednesday night, I said, of that week. The 17th. I said, I'm willing to bet that they're going to, by Friday, they're going to find the bombers and kill them or, you know, whatever. And they tried killing the little, and now it comes out they did try killing the younger one. So my instincts weren't cur- weren't uh, off. And I remember I said, wow, it's odd that they uh, they took him alive, but they must not have been able to kill him, and there's you know too many people watching, so they had to take him out, right? It was like my instincts were correct. Now it's coming out that the kid wasn't in an hour-long firefight like they were reporting that night. He was unarmed in the boat, and yet they lit that guy's boat up. Well, you know, Popeye, he could have had a bomb. It, what about due process? I thought there was this, this hour-long firefight where they exchanged fire back and forth. Remember that? Well, they exchanged fire with the suspect back and forth, and finally he gave up. No, the cops lit the boat up. They rolled up on the boat and just lit it up. He didn't have a gun on him. Unarmed. Even they're saying it. Where did due process go? I know, I know, I know. He's a terrorist. Popeye, are you, are, are you saying you side with the terrorists? I thought you were a veteran. Wouldn't you want to get this guy? He's Al-Qaeda, our sworn enemy. Well, if Al-Qaeda's our enemy, then why are we funding them in Syria? Duh. What, what do you mean we're funding them in Syria? Yeah, exactly. Your ignorance is the reason why we have this problem. That's what I would say to somebody that would come at me with that. And I hear that kind of thing. Go screw yourself, man. You're, you know, you don't know. No, I do know. You're being played. You're being played. And a lot of the people on the ground, like I said... You have to understand what's going on. The reason why those police acted the way they did was because they bought into the fear. They bought into the the movie that was being presented to them, okay? For lack of a better term, I'm not saying it was filmed and faked. It's a metaphor. The fear vibe that was being pumped into them. They, they were, to them, this was, it, yes, they, they, it all really did happen, but to them, they were really out there looking for this terrorist. They were on that level. Like they were amped up. That's the frame of mind they were in. That's what their training is for. You get it now? The whole psychological operation goes off, right? And certain people, it's done for a reason because certain people throughout the area are going to react certain ways that the powers that shouldn't be want. It's a big game of chess, except it's not a one-level chessboard. It's multi-levels, multi-layered, all different tiers, ladies and gentlemen. These people know what they're doing. That's why it's important for us to not get too caught up. Yes, we, we must hold the police that do things wrong accountable and the military Soldiers, whatever, sailors, airmen, marines that do things that are wrong. We need to hold them accountable for what they do. But we must not keep our anger focused on them because that's what the people that are playing this huge game of chess want. And that's exactly what they need to continue doing what they're doing. Instead, we need to reach out to them and make them understand that what happened was wrong. There's a lot of people that partook in gun confiscations during Katrina that are ashamed of themselves and that wouldn't do it again because they have woken up, they understand. So instead of this half, this, this thing being required to be turned into such a negative, Oh my God, you know, it is negative what we saw, but let's try to turn this into a learning experience because the powers that shouldn't be are, they learn from everything they do. And it's about time that we start playing by the same rules. The Art of War by Sun Tzu, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Ah, craziness, craziness, craziness. How many times have I said we live in 
bizarro world. We really do. I'm sitting here during the break, and I just have a, a, a whole list of things that I want to go into. <sighs> Another senseless death. 61-year-old man was shot to death by police while his wife was handcuffed in another room during a drug raid on the wrong house. Time to stop the war on drugs. It is dumb. It is money-consuming. It is uh, time-consuming. It is resource-consuming. And it's killing people and putting people in jail. Oh, that's right. That's probably one of the reasons it'll never go away. Because of the prison industrial complex. That's right. The prison industrial complex. You know, when you call customer service at like 3 o'clock in the morning and you're all excited because you hear an English voice on the line and you're like, wow, this company is awesome. They have customer service here in the U.S. at 3 a.m. How awesome is that? Hmm. Yeah. I have news for you. A lot of those people that you're talking to are in a prison somewhere in this country. They're prisoners. Slaves. They probably make 25 or 30 cents or maybe 50 cents an hour. Sitting there, answering calls, and... Logging into your account with your credit card information and your social security number and all this other stuff. Oh, yes. I'll bet you you didn't know that. That's right. You ever wonder why you call up like, oh, I don't know, you call up one of these big companies, with, let's say, I don't know, a big internet service provider perhaps. Or they have like a chat session with you at 3 or 4 in the morning. And you talk to this person and they say, yeah, the information that you're seeing on your computer and you're logged in perhaps to your account. And they're saying, oh, I see different stuff. It's still showing me the, the old bill from two or three weeks ago. And they say, yeah, my computer system just, ha I guess they haven't updated it on my end yet. You know why? Because they're remotely logging in. That's why. It's a workstation, and perhaps they just they don't have access to that portion or for whatever reason that, that, that thing hasn't been updated yet. Does it really take two or three weeks for it, something in the same in the, the loop to work like that? Well, Popeye, you know, red tape. Really? Some of these companies are the same companies that bring you internet, high-speed internet. If they could have the technology to bring you the high-speed internet, don't you think that they would have the technology to make... Their computer systems work with one another. I know the government doesn't, but a lot of these big corporations do have their stuff together. When they say that they don't and it doesn't work together, they're usually lying. Okay, back in the day, that was a valid excuse, but in the day of, in the days of IT professionals out the yin yang, there is no excuse, and that's something that would have come up, uh, you know, on the inside. <coughs> People need to we need to think. We need to think outside the box. That's how they keep getting away with all this stuff, is a lot of times people don't think. They don't, they, for whatever reason. You know, I, I find often, you know what reason I find most? People say, well, I wouldn't do that. I would never do that. Well, you not doing it and them not doing it are two different things, ladies and gentlemen. They are not you. To understand why they do the things they do you have to understand that you and the powers that shouldn't be are two different types of people mentally physically we're the same but mentally we're very different than them they lack empathy and a lot of that is because they've been through horrific things as children themselves that's how these bloodlines pass it on they they do the same trauma-based mind control techniques that are used on these mind-controlled slaves, right? The Project Monarch kids and all them, the Disney kids and all them, right? Well, the same things are done to these kids in these bloodlines. So that way when they're older, they don't have any empathy and then they can carry on and do the heartless things that they do as adults. Just something to think about. Again, 
You gotta know how the whole game is being played in order to win. We will be right back. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, we are back, and as promised, I'm going to queue up. Actually, I've already got it queued up. I'm going to play the audio that I put together for you. It's a bit of an inspirational speech. Again, to those who are awake, you will recognize the speech. But for the many new listeners here at Unbound that are listening, uh, this will definitely light a fire underneath your feet to do something. I know you're out there. I can feel you now. I know that you're afraid. You're afraid of us. You're afraid of change. I don't know the future. I didn't come here to tell you how this is going to end. I came here to tell you how it's going to begin. I'm going to show these people what you don't want them to see. I'm going to show them a world without you. A world without rules and controls, without borders or boundaries. A world where anything is possible. Where we go from there is a choice I leave to you. President John F. Kennedy. Ladies and gentlemen, the very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweighed the dangers which are cited to justify it. Even today, there is little value in opposing the threat of a closed society by imitating its arbitrary restrictions. Even today, there is little value in ensuring the survival of our nation if our traditions do not survive with it. And there is very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment. That I do not intend to permit to the extent that it's in my control. And no official of my administration, whether his rank is high or low, civilian or military, should interpret my words here tonight as an excuse to censor the news, to stifle dissent, to cover up our mistakes, or to withhold from the press and the public the facts they deserve to know. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. No president should fear public scrutiny of his program. For from that scrutiny comes understanding, and from that understanding comes support or opposition, and both are necessary. I am not asking your newspapers to support an administration, but I am asking your help in the tremendous task of informing and alerting the American people. For I have complete confidence... <laughs> ...in the response and dedication of our citizens whenever they are fully informed. I not only could not stifle controversy among your readers, I welcome it. This administration intends to be candid about its errors. For as a wise man once said, 
An error doesn't become a mistake until you refuse to correct it. We intend to accept full responsibility for our errors, and we expect you to point them out when we miss them. Without debate, without criticism, no administration and no country can succeed, and no republic can survive. That is why the Athenian lawmaker Sola decreed it a crime for any citizen to shrink from controversy. And that is why our press was protected by the First Amendment, the only business in America specifically protected by the Constitution, not primarily to amuse and entertain, not to emphasize the trivial and the sentimental, not to simply give the public what it wants, but to inform, to arouse, to reflect, to state our dangers and our opportunities, to indicate our crises and our choices, to lead, mold, educate, and sometimes even anger public opinion. This means greater coverage and analysis of international news, for it is no longer far away and foreign, but close at hand and local. It means greater attention to improved understanding of the news, as well as improved transmission. And it means, finally, that government at all levels must meet its obligation to provide you with the fullest possible information outside the narrowest limits of national security. And so it is to the printing press, to the recorder of man's deeds, the keeper of his conscience, the courier of his news, that we look for strength and assistance, confident that with your help, man will be what he was born to be, free and independent. Even we heal as a team, we're going to crumble. Inch by inch, play by play, till we're finished. We're in hell right now, gentlemen, believe me. And we can stay here, get the shish kicked out of us, or we can fight our way back, way back, back, way back. into the light. Into the light. Into the light. We can climb out of hell, out of hell, out of hell. One inch at a time. You know, when you get old in life, things get taken from. You. I mean, that's that's part of life. But you only learn that when you start losing stuff. You find out life's this game of inches. So is football. Because in either game, life or football, the margin for error is so small. I mean, one half a step too late or too early, and you don't quite make it. One half second too slow, too fast, you don't quite catch it. The inches we need are everywhere around us. They're in every break of the game, every minute, every second. On this team, we fight for that inch. On this team, we tear ourselves and everyone else around us to pieces for that inch. We claw our fingernails for that inch. Because we know when we add up all those inches, that's going to make the fucking difference between winning and losing. It's the guy who's willing to die who's going to win that itch. And I know if I'm going to have any life anymore, it's because I'm still willing to fight and die for that itch. Because that's what living is. The six inches in front of your face. Now I can't make you do it. You got to look at the guy next to you. Look into his eyes. Now I think you're going to see a guy who will go that inch with you. You're going to see a guy who will sacrifice himself for this team because he knows when it comes down to it, you're going to do the same for him. That's the team, gentlemen. And either we heal now as a team or we will die as individuals. Individual, individual, individual. Now, when I've played that in the past, people used to question me about the, the old intro portion, the final part. When I played that in the past, people would question me and say, well, do you mean like social, socialism and communism? No. 
I believe that everybody is important as an individual. It is their individuality that is an important part of a collective humanity. Okay? But if we want to get out of this hell that we're in now, we have to work together as humanity. I'm not talking about, you know, workers' rights and communist BS and all that crap propaganda. I'm talking about doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do on a human level. If you drive down the street and you see an accident happen, you stop. If there's already police and ambulances there, obviously you don't have to stop. But if you literally witness the accident happen, don't keep going and just calling your phone. Oh, I, I saw an accident happen. You should send an ambulance to wherever and wherever. Pull over and make sure the person's okay. Oh, I know. It, you have to go somewhere. Be late by 15 minutes. Tell the person, oh, I'm sorry I'm late. I stopped it because there was an accident. Someone was bleeding. Wanted to make sure they wouldn't bleed to death on the side of the highway before the police and ambulance got there. Who's supposed to render aid in that first few minutes before the powers that be come and rescue people, right? Firefighters and the police. You! Now, I don't mean get involved in everybody's personal business if people are fighting on the street and it's just two people arguing or whatever. You know, you have to be careful with that kind of a situation. Obviously, if somebody's just stomping someone's face into the ground, perhaps you should go over and uh, at least pull the guy off the guy on the ground. Obviously, if the person's face is oatmeal, uh, <clears throat> they're not going to be doing uh, any fighting back. But, I, I mean, let's be realistic. If, you're, if you see someone homeless on the street... Uh, you know, if you don't want to give them a dollar, because sometimes you're right, they will go buy alcohol or perhaps somebody might go buy drugs with it. But uh, more often than not, it's usually booze because it's cheaper and more readily available. So, okay, go buy them a slice of pizza. I've done it. You know, we have to start being better to each other. Start looking out for one another and realize that we are all on the same team. It's called the human race. Okay? I don't care if you're black, you're white, you're Spanish, uh, or whatever, of some Latin descent, whatever you want to call it. Asian, it doesn't matter, I don't care. Middle Eastern, a Arab, uh, I, 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 you know, uh, Persian for the Iranians. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you have black hair, blonde hair, blue eyes, brown eyes, freckles, no freckles, red hair. We're all humans. Okay? We're all on the same frigging team. And the longer we allow ourselves to be divided by the powers that shouldn't be, the more we're going to be under this huge iron thumb that is just pushing down on us and controlling us and retarding humanity as a whole. Ladies and gentlemen, I've said it before and I'll say it again. We should be well beyond where we are. And it is time we started to catch up. You catch my drift? You understand? It is time that we stand up. And that's why I started that clip with the ending of The Matrix where Neo says, I'm going to show these people what you don't want them to know. And that would be that you are the solution, ladies and gentlemen. You have the power, not them. We'll be right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, final segment. Really quick because I forgot to mention this earlier, and this is something that people need to pay attention to. There is still a push to get an online sales tax, because as you know, there are, there is no, I should say, online sales tax. I think there are one or two states that may have their own, if I remember correctly, uh, laws on the books about online sales tax, but there is no federal online, there is no law requiring uh, online purchases 
to pay sales tax. Well, that'll be coming to an end if we don't do something about it. Because guess what? There are lawmakers that are going to be like, Oh my God. My constituents are losing money. I talk to them. These internet people. See, they don't understand the internet. And a lot of times the businesses that they represent probably don't understand the internet either. Or they have a crappy, crappy, crappy business model. And that's why they're losing money. Okay? Well, you know, these people, the people buy their stuff online, and I can't, I, I can't keep up with Amazon. Well, then you have to figure something out. Make your own online store. Offer people stuff. Think outside the box. I mean, think about that. You, you have one business model, and if it doesn't work, you go to the government to enforce it. Don't let anybody else have any, anything else. Don't let anybody else have any other options other than mine. Because it's not fair because I refuse to change things. So if you're one of these business people that gets pissed off, right, because you're losing money, and I understand you're losing money, I get it, well, then you got to adapt. Welcome to the 21st century and the Internet. I remember back in the day when it was a novelty to buy things online. And that people were like, oh, I purchased something online. Ha, 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 ha. Isn't it so cool and keen? Yeah, I remember back in the day when that's how things were. Guess what? It ain't like that anymore. It's normal for people to pay bills online. It's normal for people to, you know, do at least 50 to 60% of their shopping online. I purchase pretty much everything I need online. And, you know, I I still go to the store, but, like, computer-wise or... Uh, even sound st- sound wise for the radio show and stuff, I purchase it online. Unless there's a local like mom and pop store that I know around here that can uh, satisfy my my needs for whatever I need, then I'll go to them first. Otherwise, I'll go online, and I a lot of times I find the. I, sometimes I'll go to Amazon, and usually through Amazon, I'll try to find a a small seller. You know, someone that sells out of whatever, that's their job or their second gig or whatever, is selling on Amazon, you know, not buying from Amazon itself. Same thing, I'll, when I buy books, I try to find local bookstores around here first, go in and see if they can order me the book, maybe match the price. You know, a lot of times if you do that, you go into your local stores and you try to, you say to them, hey, look, you know, can I, I can get this online, but I'd rather purchase it from you and give you the sale, you know, but I, you know, blah, 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 I can get it for this much because they're, you know, there's no tax. Maybe can you give me a little bit of a discount on it? Is there, you know, markup, obviously, blah, 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 blah. You know, you work with them. But no, that's not how things are going to happen if we just sit back and don't do anything about this because they're going to end up putting some sort of crappy law on the books like they do with everything else. And then, you know, buying online will now no longer be cheap anymore because people purchase things online because it is cheaper for them. So punish the people that want to purchase things. That's the way they do it. Punish the have-nots. Because they want to have something. That's what's going to happen. And I'm sorry, I don't care what anybody says. Oh, the money will go for this or that. The other thing, right. right. Tax money never goes what they say it's going to go for. Okay? Ever. Ever, 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 ever. Anyway... Ending the broadcast tonight really quick, I'm going to read you, again, the litany against fear. I want to read this for you because all you hear in the mainstream every day now, and this has not been since, you know, the bombing, this has been going on for a long time, at least since 9-11, is fear, 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 fear. So, here is the, uh, the, the antidote to the mainstream media's fear porn. The litany against fear I must not fear fear is the mind killer fear is the little death that brings total obliteration I will face my fear I will permit it to pass over me and through me and when it has gone past I will turn the inner eye to see its path where the fear has gone there will be nothing only I will remain. Ladies and gentlemen, 
don't buy into it. Look to yourself for the solutions. This is Sparta! We're out of time. I love you all. I'll see you all again tomorrow night, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Till then, no fear, only love. Remember, you guys, you are the solutions to your problems. The solutions to our problems are an inside job, ladies and gentlemen. I'm out of here. I love you all.